I saw a very interesting EG today and I thought I will share it with you. So in the next few minutes we will review this EG and the clinical context that will highlight some of the pertinent details. Okay, let's get started. So this is the EG and this is the very first page here. This is an average reference montage. You can look at the odd numbers record electrical activity from the left side and the even numbers record electrical activity from the right side and the letters ending with and the channels ending with the letter Z and record electrical activity from the midline. So what do you see here? This is an end. You do not see the clear posterior dominant alpha rhythm. What you see here, this is some of the 60 cycle artifact that is an electrical artifact. If I use a NOSH filter, which I'll do right now, it gets rid of that 60 cycle artifact. So to get rid of the 60 cycle artifact, you need to use a NOSH filter. Something that really stands out here is try keeping a track of the activity in the left occipital head region. So that will be O1 and also the T5 electrodes. So as we go along, you start seeing some sharply contoured broad waves in the occipital head region. So this is O1 and you see some of those sharp waves on the at T5. But interestingly, you also see some of those sharp waves in the right occipital region, which is O2. And we keep going. And some of the sharp activity gains amplitude. So this becomes more prominent here. What you see here, these are eye blink artifacts. So what you see in FP1 and FP2, these are eye blink artifacts. What you see here, this is a rectus muscle spike. So this right here is a rectus muscle spike. This right here is a rectus muscle spike. And the sharp waves in the left occipital and posterior temporal region become more prominent. So this is a sharp wave. This is a sharp wave. When you see sharp waves in adjacent electrodes, you say that this EG has a good electrical field or the sharp waves are demonstrating a good electrical field. So the presence of sharp waves suggests if this is all you had seen on the CG, you would say that this person has an increased risk of seizure onset from the left posterior quadrant, including the left posterior temporal and the left occipital head region. But it does not end there. You see sharp waves in the left occipital head region and you see some sharp waves on the right side as well which I will demonstrate to you later. But make sure you understand the difference. This is an epileptiform discharge. This is in O1. But this is not an epileptiform discharge. This is a rectus muscle spike which is at F7. So you need to recognize what is epileptiform and what is not. Here you see some sharp waves in P4 and O2 as well as in T5 and O1. Any epileptogenic generator or any generator of epilepsy that is close to the midline can potentially show EEG abnormalities on both hemispheres, so keep that in mind. And the sharp wave discharges are seen both in the right as well as in the left occipital and temporal head region and P4 is also close to the field so in the left and right posterior quadrants. Keep an eye on the ECG. ECG shows a tachycardia, a pretty rapid heart rate. And you see something interesting happening here. So if you keep an eye on O1, you see this becomes more rhythmic. There is an evolution in frequency and amplitude. So you see this is a very rhythmic activity in the left occipital region and T5. And the amplitudes start increasing and the frequency starts changing. So and here it is quite prominent. So this is a seizure coming from the left posterior quadrant. You see these sharp waves, very rhythmic sharp waves, 
which are increasing in amplitude which also show an electrical field at T5 and in fact you can also see this in the right posterior quadrant and then it tends to disappear right here so that was an electrographic seizure coming from the left posterior quadrant the question is if you have occipital lobe seizures what is the typical clinical manifestation so some of the occipital lobe seizures can be clinically silent at other times patients may see a positive or a negative phenomena so a positive phenomena could be flashing lights or a change in color some people report seeing colorful squiggly lines and it will be in the visual field contralateral to the occipital lobe that is involved that is the positive phenomena the negative phenomena is some people can see blind spots some people can even develop a homonymous hemianopsia this is if the seizures are only localized to the occipital quadrants or occipital head regions sometimes what happens is a seizure will electrically spread from the occipital to the temporal head region and from a single occipital lobe the seizures may sometimes spread to the left temporal and sometimes to the right temporal head region and the clinical manifestations then will appear as if it is a temporal lobe seizure and unless you are thinking of uh, other possible generators you may misidentify the epileptogenic generator so there is a difference between the epileptic generator and the symptomatic region symptomatic region is what clinical manifestations are seen because of involvement of a certain area generator is where actually the epileptic activity starts so you need to know the distinction between the two I've seen patients mislabeled as having temporal lobe seizures when the onset was from a remote area if you do not see a clear lesion in the temporal lobe make certain that you do also look in the occipital and the frontal or the parietal regions make sure you're not missing the epileptic generator so this was a nice example of an electrographic seizure from the left uh, parietal occipital head region or we should say left posterior quadrant and this patient had multiple seizures overall if you look at the background the EEG background is also slow so you see frequencies you see some delta frequencies and you see some superimposed fast activity on top of it and there you go there's another seizure a brief rhythmic change seizures sometimes can be only five or ten seconds seizures do not necessarily need to be 30 seconds or longer so you can see some activity that is extremely brief what is important is try to correlate that with the clinical picture that the patient is presenting with this is another seizure in fact this shows a seizure in the right posterior quadrant so you see a rhythmic buildup and there's an evolution in frequency there is an evolution in amplitude keep an eye at P4NO2 so my impression about this EG is that this is an abnormal EG with intractal epileptiform discharges noted in both posterior quadrants so the left and right posterior quadrants and multiple electrographic seizures which were originating in posterior quadrants bilaterally and therefore this person probably requires a little more aggressive treatment with medications and secondly this patient is at a high risk of having ongoing seizures so when you see those kind of abnormalities and specifically when seizures are focal you want to ensure that this person has had some kind of a neuroimaging such as an MRI of the brain to correlate with the uh, to correlate and make certain there is no underlying structural abnormality that is predisposing this patient to those seizures that's pretty much it for now thank you I will see you at the next tutorial